Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to New Brit Workshop. I've bought a new bench-mounted pillar drill and continuing my mobile workshop concept, uh, I've put it onto a mobile base, which you see here now. There we go, sir, all ready for you. Now, this video is about the base unit itself. Uh, I will be covering the uh, pillar drill uh, in a separate video where I show you how I got it all uh, set up. Now, I'm rather pleased with the base unit. Um, it's got uh, two lots of drawers. Uh, there are three here, and there's one drawer here as well. Now, this drawer is a half drawer, uh, and it's the, the upper half of the space. Uh, and this top drawer on this side is a half drawer using the lower part of the space. And my rationale is that most of the time I'll be operating the drill from here, and I wanted a drawer which was not too deep uh, in order to keep various drill bits in and so on and so forth. I also uh, wanted the ability to have a few things at hand uh, on the top here. So I've made this little tray which is set in and glued in place so I can keep counter sinks and the odd drill that I use all the time. Now whenever this drill is operated it has to not only uh, be uh, locked in place with the uh, locking clamps on the casters but it also needs to be fixed to the wall and I've come up with an arrangement which is just out of camera now whereby I can make sure that this is firmly attached to the wall and now I can plug the drill in switch it on and operate it I've had help from two companies in producing this the first is Colding casters who provided uh, the four casters which I've got underneath and these are industrial ones and also Accuride who've provided me with the draw runners. Uh, the ones at the top here are pushed to open because I didn't want to have a handle here uh, and the ones on this side are self-closing and that's really important because I've come across problems with some of the cheap and cheerful runners that I've used that if you've got a machine running on top of a mobile base slowly but surely the drawers seem to come open. Now the main carcass was pretty straightforward and it's very much like the bandsaw stand and some of the other mobile base units that I've made for the workshop. Now these are the four styles and uh, one at each corner uh, and I've marked them up very carefully uh, where they are in relation to each other uh, and I've got written here left left on these two and here it says front and front and so on so theoretically I can't go wrong and I did that before I started marking them up for the domino joints so I've had to be really careful uh, marking all of those up now the dominoes I'm going to be using are six millimeter dominoes and they're 40 millimeters long. There are something like 30 domino joints in this bit of framework and this is a good time to just line these uh, styles up like this and just check that there's a corresponding match across each of the uh, planes between the domino joints. The various panels are set in. My drawer construction uh, is again very similar to the drawer construction that I've used on other projects. Uh, they are made of MDF. These are 18 millimeter thick pieces of MDF around here. Uh, and in the case of this drawer and the one at the top here, the front is a piece of veneered 10 millimeter MDF. This front is only held on by the glue, uh, which follows a, a three sides of 18 millimeter MDF. It's glued on, and I believe that's going to be good for a lifetime. Now I'm doing a sort of a dry assembly of this drawer over here uh, because it consists of so many different parts that uh, there's a lot of scope for error <laughs> and with my woodwork that's more likely to happen than not. And the way I've made this drawer up is that I've created uh, solid sides by having uh, one long piece and then joined on a short piece here on both sides. Uh, I've got a standard bottom. At the back here there is a back and that's out of 18 mil uh, MDF. Uh, th this is the uh, bottom, if you imagine the drawers upside down at the moment, this will be the bottom of the large recessed area here. I will domino that, just a domino there and a domino there, just to make it a little easier when it comes to assembly. Uh, there's a, a, a piece of 10 mil MDF in there and, and that has a recess in it to allow this the bottom of the drawer 
uh, to go into it. Well, that's that drawer now fitted. I've just put the top on loosely so I could gauge the uh, small gap at the top and get that right, and that's fine. And it's just pushed to open. Now, I've not made any effort to put any uh, hardwood strip on the edge here. What I intend to do is when I do the Osmo, I'm going to make sure that there's plenty going into the uh, grain of the MDF, uh, and I'm sure that will be absolutely fine. It's very easy with these Accuride uh, draw runners uh, to make an adjustment because the very front fitting here uh, has got an adjuster in it so you can uh, loosen the screws a little and adjust this and that will adjust the height. Uh, and I did that, tightened everything up and now it's absolutely where it should be. The drawers on this side are very similar. As I said, this one has a 10 millimeter uh, veneered MDF front. Uh, the drawer is narrower because this drawer uh, has a deep section here, uh, which I thought I would use for you know, standing drills up like this. But having uh, had a practice go, I put my hand down onto a brad point drill. I've decided I'll rethink that a little bit. So uh, more, more work needed there. Uh, but anyway, so this drawer is narrower because of that. But in every other respect, it's very much like the other drawers I make. Uh, these drawers down here are identical to ones that I've made in other cabinets. It's 18mm MDF, veneered MDF at the front, uh, and uh, some dominoes to keep that together. So I've got the last two drawers made now, and they're both the same. And I'm now going to fit them. I'm going to measure to the centre line now of the uh, runners themselves from the base here. And I also want to estimate how far back uh, my hole should be from the front of the drawer. And so for this far side, I've scribed a line from the base there, 80 millimeters from there, and that's my center line running that way. And it's 35 millimeters from the front of this part that gets fixed uh, to the drawer, uh, to that uh, adjuster which goes that way, 35 millimeters, which is where I want to put the screw. Uh, but if I measure from the front here, and then from the front here, this is 22, uh, and this is 16, and I want a gap of 2. 16 from 22 is 6. A gap of 2 makes this 4. So 4 plus 35 is 39. So I'm going to put a pencil mark there at 39. And that is where I'm going to have my first screw. And that now is the hole that I'm going to place uh, here in the uh, one which is e elongated that way, the vertical adjuster. So in theory this should go in reasonably close to where it should be. And that's reasonably close now, uh, close enough that I can uh, now put some more screws in uh, and do just a tiny tweak of an adjustment to get it a little better. Now this is the underside of the top and I'm about to mark out where uh, the holes are going in order to secure the pillar drill uh, to the, the top. And I want it nice and centred across here. So I've got this uh, rule which came from Axminster and it's one of their new precision rules and uh, I was given this as a prototype and asked for my views on it. And this is the first time I've ever showed it on a video. And I'm pretty sure now they'll be on their website. Anyway, it's got a centre mark here. And the graduations go outwards from that centre mark. So it's 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. outwards. Um, on this side here, it's a normal uh, 0 to 600 and 10 uh, millimeters. O on the other side, it's also uh, the same but reverse. So up there now it's 0 to 610, and down here it's the other. So you turn it over if you want uh, the center markings on that side, turn it over if you want the center markings here. So uh, someone's put a bit of thought into this, so that's quite good. Now I want to find center, so I'm looking for uh, the same readings at both ends, and this is now 260 in my case. And so my centre is here. Uh, I don't really need to measure the centre because I know that the distance between centres of my uh, pillar drill uh, at the front here is 200. So I only need to go out to 100 here and 100 here. And that's the uh, left and right hand uh, uh, holes for the front of the pillar drill.
and I'm going to be using some uh, penny washers uh, to spread the load uh, for the uh, bolts that are here. And I'm now just going to drill a, a recess to take that penny washer and the nut. Um, interestingly, I didn't realise this until the other day, uh, Axminster now, now do Centrotech ended uh, Forstner cutters. And uh, that's a 30mm one, just gone in there now. Now probably the most exciting part of any project is the last few stages before it's complete. Now these are the industrial quality casters which I've used on the majority of the mobile benches that I've got. That's those on. And that's it. Good. And another mobile base is born. All I've got to do is put the drawers in and the top on and we're done. That's it. Last drawer done. Now in order to transfer the machine from its uh, original position there uh, to the mobile base, one has to be really, really careful. This machine is very heavy. And if you're in any doubt, you must get someone to help you do this. And I've locked all the casters off, so there's absolutely no way the base can move during this process. Now, a pillar drill mounted like this on top of this cabinet is top heavy. This motor weighs a ton, uh, this is a casting here, and all the other bits and pieces make it center of gravity very high. And so you must never operate uh, this machine when it's just floating around on the floor. Even if you lock the casters, it's still very, very risky. So you need a scheme. And what I've done is I've created uh, this block of wood. And the block of wood is going to screw to the wall uh, where I'm going to be using the machine. And it's got in it a couple of 8mm holes. And these are for some pegs which are going to fit down into the top of the base unit. Now once the position has been settled, and I've just got this clamped uh, loosely at the moment, and I've got it such that the cabinet is actually going to be probably about a millimetre and a half, maybe two millimetres away from the wall when it's in position. So I can just feel a little bit of a ridge at the back there. Now you may just see a little cut out here. What I did was I, I used a 10 millimetre uh, drill uh, with a piece of wood clamped on here uh, to make a, a semicircular hole uh, through here. And what I'm going to do is have a very short uh, uh, peg made out of this 10 millimetre aluminium sticking up from here. Uh, and then that means I can push the cabinet up against the wall and against this and this peg will locate with that recess there. And then that means I'll easily be able to put the uh, locking pieces into place uh, and, and actually find where they should go with, with no, no problem at all. And I've now cut this to length, that fits in there and you can see that's how that's going to go across there. And I'll just make sure that those will fit in and the other one will fit in there like so. Now I've got some wood here which is probably about uh, two and a half millimetres thick. So there we go, that, that's in place there. And now I can mark uh, the wall uh, so I can then put the raw plugs in and uh, fix that to the wall. Now remember as always do a quick check to make sure there's no live electricity around. Well obviously I've got to move that cable out of the way a bit. Nothing there. Uh, and the, in the United Kingdom, there'll be a bit of uh, expanded metal at this uh, corner. There won't be a wire there. That's why it's going off in that place. But there's nothing else to worry about. Well, here it goes. It's uh, C. Use the stud to locate, like so. And then what we've got to do, see if this will register. Yep, that's in. And the other one's in. And I can sort of show that this is pretty jolly solid uh, and I haven't even locked the feet and of course you must lock the feet when you're using the machine as well. Well there you have it, that's the new uh, mobile base for my bench mounted pillar drill. I will be making the plans available for this free of charge but please remember 
to let me have your email address. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.